Hey guys, so I want to make a video today uh, talking about Forescan and uh, more specifically how to uh, connect to the vehicle and then just give a brief overview of uh, what you can do in Forescan and what the different options are and kind of go through them a little bit. Uh, so the first thing here that we want to talk about is uh, how you're going to connect to your vehicle. So Forescan has a couple different options. Uh, one, you can do a COM port connection, so basically you can do a USB connection from your computer to the ODB2 port, or you can also do a Bluetooth connection. Uh, so I particularly chose to do a USB to, US, or to ODB2, um, as I didn't really want to mess with Bluetooth and have any disconnection issues or anything like that while flashing. So the uh, particular cable that I ordered is uh, this one right here, it's called an ELM config. Um, and I know for a fact that this works with Forescan. Um, the reason I went with this one is just because it's relatively inexpensive. And uh, one of the things that I will note is that it has this switch. And basically what this switch does is it allows you to switch between basically two different CAN channels. It's uh, HS CAN and MS CAN. I think it's high speed and medium speed CAN. Um, so basically in vehicles, there's a lot of communicating between different ECUs and uh, to avoid high bus loads, you basically have two CAN bus systems. Um, so some of your controllers will be on one channel, some will be on the other. So what this device allows you to do is actually toggle between the two. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to launch Forescan. And uh, of course, we're going to connect our USB to our laptop and then connect it to our ODB2 port. Uh, in this particular example, I am connecting to a 2012 F250 6.7 diesel. Uh, it is an XL, uh, so you will notice that when we connect, there might be a uh, less modules than there are in your vehicle, as uh, this vehicle does not have many options. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come into here, you're gonna come down to the bottom here, and you're gonna see this button, connect to vehicle. Now. Uh, what it's going to ask you here is going to ask if your device has this switch. Mine does. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are on HS and that our key is on. So we're turn the key on and then we're going to hit OK. Now what this is doing is it's basically scanning through the different modules. Uh, I'm going to pick them up. In this case, I have already connected to the vehicle. So it's going to ask me if I want to pull up this uh, saved profile. So I want to hit no so I can show you guys what it's going to do. Uh, it's going to ask you, is this vehicle equipped with navigation system? Uh, so like I mentioned, this is an XL, so we're going to hit no because it does not have it. And then all it's going to do is it picked up the VIN, and then it's going to start scanning for the different modules. All right, so now that it's scanned everything, uh, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna save this profile? I'm gonna hit no since I've already saved it. And we're gonna walk through some things. So this appears your log. This is basically just gonna keep track of everything that you do and it's gonna put it here. Um, I don't mess with too much else in here. Uh, this is just some more information. Um, this is gonna tell you all the different um, basically modules that you have access to. Um, and these are profiles. So if you have multiple vehicles, you basically will see them saved here. Uh, the next option that we have here is to read DTCs. So DTCs are diagnostic troll codes. Um, basically those are related to any check engine lights or anything like that. Or a lot of the times the uh, notifications will be turned off. So you might not have a check engine light on, but you can come down in here and you can hit read DTCs and it'll actually uh, scan the vehicle and it'll pull up that uh, if it has any. If it does, you basically will see it come up here and when you click on it, it'll give you more information on what the DTC number is and what possible causes are. Um, the next one over here we have is the data window. Um, so here you have a dashboard and an oscilloscope. Um, and what this allows you basically to do is to add signals on the CAN bus and view them in uh, real time. So if we come down here and we hit the little settings guy, we'll see this window. Um, this is broken out by module. 
So in this case, I'm going to go to the IPC as an example. This is the instrument cluster. So you can go to the instrument cluster, and basically this is all of the stuff that you can display in real time. Um, now, it gives you a little description of everything, um, and sometimes it'll make sense, sometimes it won't, right? Um, so we can do an example here. Uh, we can pull vehicle odometer, um, and then you can also see I have a couple other things here from a different module, fuel level, and uh, what else do we want to pull up as an example? How about we do a uh, safety belt warning and speedometer. We'll hit OK here, and then as you'll see, uh, they'll come up. And actually what we can do here is if we hit play, we'll see that these are the actual values that the sensors are reading. So right now I'm not moving speedometer zero. Um, here is my odometer in kilometers. Um, that's pretty cool. You can pull up a bunch of different stuff. Um, this is kind of useful. Uh, one thing I used it for one time is we had a uh, air temperature sensor go out on the... Uh, intake and uh, we weren't sure what sensor it was and sure enough we could pull up the value and see if it was reading put our hand over it see if it actually increased in temperature or not um, the other option here is you have an oscilloscope so you can actually plot the data as you're going um, which is pretty cool um, but what I really like about this feature is that you can set this all up and then you can go for a drive and while you're driving it'll actually log it all and you can hit stop down here and you have the option to actually save the data file. Um, and when you save the data file, you can actually go back later when you're disconnected from the vehicle, pull the log up, and play it back. Um, it's pretty helpful in diagnosing issues and stuff like that. Um, the other options that we have here is vehicle tests. So there are some built-in tests um, that you can run to basically see if a module or a particular computer is uh, having any issues. Um, so, for example, the IPC, the instrument cluster self-test, if you run this, we'll basically take all the needles and it'll sweep them left to right, make sure that they're all still moving. It'll go through all of the uh, warning lights to illuminate everything so that you can see if any of them are burned out. Um, and then it'll go through the screen and make sure that the screen is functioning. Uh, so these are pretty cool. Um, the other option that we have here is service procedures. So... Uh, in this case, I guess um, you can do some calibrations um, or some resets. So if you need to replace the body control module or uh, anything like that, these will basically auto run and do stuff. Um, you got to be careful though, uh, because if you run these unintendedly, you might you might mess something up. Um, so I did a body control module replacement, and one of the things that I had to do was uh, program the patch system. So when I put a new body control module in, uh, my keys were not programmed to the new module, and I couldn't start my truck. So I had to come in here and do the PATS programming. Um, and what this will do is it'll walk you through various things. Uh, for PATS, uh, for the keys, it told me it'll tell me, you know, insert a key, turn it on, and then it'll grab the chip number from the key, and it'll store it to the body control module. Um, so there's some useful stuff here. Uh, the other option is this programming option. So when it comes to programming, you have two options. You have as-built format, and then you have basically what this regular format is. Uh, and I'll give you an example here in a second, but as built data is basically just raw data that is not human readable. And these other configurations are human readable. Um, and this is gonna give me a warning and I'll talk about it here. Um, so one thing to be cautious of is when you're connected to your vehicle and your key is on, you're draining your battery. Um, and if you've been doing it for a while, you'll actually drain your battery, and this will actually not let you program modules. Uh, the reason that it does this is it doesn't want your vehicle to die while you're flashing data because it could corrupt the data and then your vehicle can't start. Um, but I'm just doing a demo, so I'm gonna continue here. But So this is the human readable format. Um, so this basically gives you all of the things that you can change and adjust. Um, so I had an Excel particularly, uh, you know, some things I didn't have. So I came in here and some cool things I could do is like I can enable the compass on the screen. Uh, I can change it so the Ford logo doesn't pop up on the screen. Um, I can change my fuel tank sizes. Um, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can come in here, you can double click on this stuff and you just enable it, hit the check mark, and then it'll tell you to cycle the key and then it'll flash the module and you're on your way. 
Um, so basically what you do is you would select this, select enable, select that, and then basically you hit right, and what right does is it flashes the controller. Um, so if we go back to these guys, if you go to the as-built data, the as-built data is not human readable, okay? So this basically gives you a register of memory in the CPU, and then it gives you the values. Um, and this last one here is the checksum. So if you change anything in here, you need to properly calculate the checksum. If you don't properly calculate the checksum, then the ECU knows that the data was changed and it might affect its performance. Um, so I'd be very cautious with this because you can easily uh, break the vehicle, you can break the controllers or make it so the vehicle doesn't start if you enter the wrong value here. Um, in this case, you just click here, um, you change the values. Uh, Forcecan does auto calculate a checksum. So if I change this value, it will automatically change this and calculate it for me. Uh, I have heard in the past of this not being correct though. Um, and then you just hit right and same process. Now, there are guys out there that have created spreadsheets and they have basically come in here and messed with us until they figured out what they do. So they'll have a spreadsheet and it'll say, hey, this memory location actually deals with, uh, you know, the speedometer. If you want to change it to kilometers an hour instead of 8B, do 9B. Um, you got to be very careful with that because it does change vehicle to vehicle and year to year. Um, so I have a 2012, um, and if I find a, find a spreadsheet for a 2013, it might not be the same. Um, what I suggest is if you're going to mess with any as-built data, always save the factory files. That way, if you mess up, you can actually come in here and just reflash all of the factory files uh, that you started at, and hopefully you recover if you did mess up. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. The only other thing we have here is some settings. Um, so if you happen to buy a different connector and it's not working, you can go in here and you can mess with the settings. Um, and hopefully that'll work for you. But that's an intro. Um, things can definitely get complicated. You can definitely screw stuff up. So just be careful. Um, I'll probably do a video later on explaining the as-built data a little bit more. Um, there are ways to basically decode um, these memory modules and identify what they do. Um, just to give you an example here, the body control module is fairly large, right? So there's a way that you can figure out what these mean and what everything does. Um, I did an instrument cluster swap and, you know, I was having problems with the vehicle and I actually figured out that, you know, this memory location is the VIN and I can do a decimal to hex conversion and actually change the VIN that's programmed in the module. So as-built data is useful, but it's also dangerous, right? Because I did this and I then had a VIN mismatch between multiple modules on the vehicle and it actually wouldn't start. Um, so be careful, but uh, that's just a quick overview. Thanks, guys.